Hello guys, I hope you're all doing great. We are back. Every Samsung flagship phone is not created equal, and the type of phone you receive varies depending on where you purchased it. International phones use Samsung's Exynos CPUs, although North American Galaxy S models often use the newest Snapdragon chipset. However, this might not hold true for the Galaxy S25. A forum post on Blind claims that the Galaxy S25 will not have distinct chipsets for different geographical areas. The good news is that Samsung appears to be forgoing the forthcoming Exynos 2500 in favor of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 which is a positive thing, as we can all agree. Although Samsung's Exynos CPUs have improved significantly in recent years, they still fall short of the most modern Snapdragon chips in terms of performance. The benchmarking and graphics testing conducted on the Galaxy S24 discovered that the Exynos chip regularly performed lower while the Exynos chipset was defeated in each and every test conducted, however the exact differences varied from test to test. It goes beyond the performance though. In recent years, there have also been significant advancements in the energy efficiency of Snapdragon chips. Due to the chip's increased performance, phones will not only survive longer between charges but you will also use less power and generate less heat when using the phone. In addition to that piece of news, according to the most current rumors the forthcoming Samsung Galaxy S24 FE could be released as early as this month or at the latest in October. The FCC just certified it and during that certification process, 9 watt reverse wireless charging was made possible. We finally know what to anticipate when it comes to wired charging thanks to a TUV certification, and the news isn't good. This 24FE will peak at 25 watt, precisely the same as its 2017 predecessor. Thus, the FE model loses out on at least 45 watt, which is now Samsung's maximum once more. We assume cost cutting is back at it again. The Exynos 2400 chipset, rather than the standard one, will power the Galaxy S24 FE. Rather, Samsung has chosen to use a chip that has been clocked lower for an unknown purpose, maybe to save money on cooling. Thus, that will be a definite downgrade in the FE compared to, say, the vanilla S24. In terms of design, it may be difficult to distinguish between the S24 FE and S23 FE, at least from the rear. Of course, Samsung could simplify things by introducing additional colors for the S24 FE that weren't available on the model before. That said, I'll be ending the discussion for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. The tech chat is over and I am out.